wrong? Ted's mother didn't make it. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's, uh, he's hit pretty hard. Or so are you. I can see it. Well, I, I just met him. I mean, it's kind of weird. I don't really have a right to be one of the bereaved. <clears throat> By whose rules? You're sad. You're entitled. Devoted son loses devoted mother. That kind of calls up all my issues, you know? What did you say? Issues. It's, you know, what we used to call problems. No, I thought that was what you said. Yeah. Well, I'm communing with my problems. All right, well, maybe you should commune alone. If you want to talk, though, I mean, I, I could stay. Deja vu, Edmund on Edmund, Discourse 449. I've never heard you like this before. Self-obsessed? No, you've admitted that you're sad and that things hurt. And in, until yesterday in the chapel, I never thought that you could do that. Well, it was not my strong suit. Well, you're getting better. Yeah, well, you know, you live long enough. You could live to be a hundred, Edmund, and you could still stay shut down every day of your life. That was my original intention. I'm glad you changed your mind. I saw Dimitri, and he told me that you were seeing a therapist. You know, I, I, I put in decades of training as an only child, and I got it down to perfection, and in walks big brother with his big mouth. I'm sure I would have figured it out sooner or later. You talk like somebody who's in therapy. Boring and narcissistic. I'm just surprised you didn't say anything to me. Well, you know, Brooke, it's not something you drop in casual conversation, you know? It's getting cold out, time to pick up some antifreeze. Oh, right after therapy never stopped you before. Yeah, well, that was because I uh, was trying to score mental health points with you. You're not interested in my scoring system anymore? No, I'm not doing it for show. I'm doing it for me now. So it sounds like it's going well. Yeah, it's going. I mean, Dr. Tolan is one tough nut. I suspect she'd say the same thing about you. You know, I go in with my best material, right? What does she do? Does she fall off her chair and laugh? No, no, she says... What's the message there? I mean, what, what are you trying to say? Is there a, 
Is there a meaning behind this? I mean, she's serious, hardball. Well, my hat's off to her. I mean, your best material is very hard to resist. Yeah. Well, I'm on a strict regimen of total honesty, 50 minutes a week. Seems to be spilling over into the rest of your life. Yeah, there's definitely some spillover. Brooke! What in heaven's name are you doing in here with him? What is the problem, Aunt Phoebe? I checked your office, I checked the library, the press room, and then I find you here. Never in my wildest dreams did it occur to me that you would ever want to spend any time lingering in this office. Which is, of course, why we're here. What unfortunate turn of events brings you here at this hour with that person? We were having a conversation. Oh, well, I'm sorry we interrupted. Well, I'm not sorry at all. From the looks of things, you're here just in time. Nice to see you too, Phoebe. Brooke, we have a dinner engagement at 8 o'clock, a reservation. Now, no doubt this has, uh, well, eluded your mind. I think that's enough, Aunt yeah, Phoebe. Let's go. We don't want to lose our table. <clears throat> have fun. Brooke. Thanks. I'm glad we talked. <clears throat> Brooke, if that erratic fool is starting to make you feel glad again, let me warn you... I he... don't want any warnings. Warnings spoil my appetite. Um, yeah, um, Ted, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. You look terrible, man. I just thought... I mean... What? I'm losing my mind, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Well, what else, man? No, what no, I mean, I'm losing my mind. Something's wrong. Something up here is not functioning. Right. All right, listen, forget about functioning, okay? Let me, let me take care of these things. All right, I'll take care of the funeral no, arrangements. No, I got it. Right? Just... I've got to do it. I got to take her home. I got to take her back to the vineyard. Okay, okay. All right. Let me, let me make some calls. All right. No. Is somebody in California. No, it's, it's done. It's done. There's a, a hill. In the vineyard, overlooks the whole valley. My father's buried there. There's no question in my mind what she want me to do. Okay, you were lucky. She was real special. Was I? I used to think so, Edmund. Now I'm not so sure. Ever since my mother's died, I feel like... like my life is just dissolving, you know? And there's nothing there for me to grab onto. Yeah, listen, I know that feeling. You'll get over it listen, in time, okay? Something happened tonight. Something weird. I got in the car and drove. I don't even know why. I stopped the car in the middle of nowhere. I get out of the car, and I saw her, Edmund. So help me God, I saw her. I saw her. The girl, the one in my head. You had another flash. No, I mean I actually saw her. I don't understand. You think I do? Wait, you, you saw an actual person? I don't know. I couldn't have. I know it's impossible. Okay, okay, so help me God, it felt on, real. Okay, okay. Listen. You got in your car and you took a drive. Where? Uh, to some bridge. I have no idea where. It was just there in the fog. All right, you stopped the car. Why'd you get out? What'd you, did you fall asleep? No, no, it wasn't a dream. It couldn't have been because it happened after I got out of the car. Why did you stop the car? Were you tired? No, Edmund, I was awake. I know I was. I... I pulled the car over because my head felt like it was going to blow up. I had this rush of, of images, you know, of memories, of feelings, really, really fast, one on top of another, and some of it was was awful. It was violent. Billy really Clyde Suggles. Yeah, what happens if I wasn't there in okay, time? Okay, okay, okay. What happens? So you pulled over, you got out, your head was splitting, and it was pea soup, right? Was anybody else there? Nobody. Just the girl. Okay, did she say anything? How could she have? She wasn't even there. You're not sure of that? I don't know. I mean, sure I am. I wasn't, but I am now. I mean, she couldn't have been. Don't you see? It's happened. First the town, then the, the headaches, my mother's death. I, I, I've I just popped. Okay. I actually went after her. Okay. Can you believe okay. I did okay. that? Okay, you're on overload. You're just exhausted. No kidding. I passed out cold. Okay, okay. <laughs> just... let's go to the hospital. No, right? no, no. no. You've got to see no. a doctor, No, man. no, Edmund, please, no. 
No more doctors. After what I've been through, I don't ever want to see a hospital again for the rest of my life. Besides, there's too much I've got to do. You don't have to do everything yes, this I do. minute. Don't you see? I've got to get back to the things that I know. I, I can't keep going like this. It's driving me crazy. I've got to take, I got to take Nola home. It's what she'd want, what I want. I want to get the hell out of Pine Valley. You're exhausted. I'm fine. I'm okay. I just. I just want to go home. You'll get there. I know what you're thinking, but I'm okay. I know what I'm doing. I just, I want to go back to where things make sense. Okay. All right. All right, you go to your funeral, okay? And then you come back here. I don't know, maybe. No, maybe, definitely. You're on the verge of a serious breakthrough. Either that or a breakdown. Listen to me. You go, you go, you get your head straight, all right? Meanwhile, I'll dig up some stuff on Tuggle. Maybe we'll get a mystery uh, woman who will get some idea on this woman. How are you going to do that? Huh? How are you going to ID a, a ghost, a hallucination? Because it's no hallucination, and I think you know that. Edwin, the only thing I know is that my mother is dead. That half, half the time my head feels like it's splitting open, and every time I blink, I remember something that's, that's bad. I've got to go. After that, after Mother's buried, I don't know, I can't make any promises. If Edmund is making strides on the psychological front, well, then you should be encouraged. You give him an inch, and he'll take your heart and soul. You know, I tell you, fish sticks at home are looking better and better. Oh, I mean, his charm, his talent, his intensity, they will just simply wear your defenses down. And before you know it, you'll find yourself as deeply re-involved as ever. Now, Phoebe, stop it. Brooke is not a child. She's a grown woman, managing a publishing house, raising a child at home, and she is perfectly aware of how she can do this without your interfering. Wow. Oh, thank you, Langley. Well, I think I'm ready to order. How about you? Finishing up some research. <clears throat> On the redlining scene? No, no, this is something for a friend. I, um, just, somebody wants me to dig up some information on that old town character, Billy Clyde Tuggle. Billy Clyde? Why would somebody want information on Billy Clyde now? I don't know, it's just a friend of mine, Ted Orsini. Did I say something wrong? Ted Orsini asked you to research Billy Clyde Tuggle? Mm -hmm. Why would a malign mogul from California want background information on a two-bit pimp? He thinks he may remember him. From where? Jail? It's a strange story, Brooke. I mean, this guy's been through the emotional ringer. His mother died, and she was the only family that he had. And now it turns out that Nola, his mother, may not even be his mother. And he figures the only way that he can figure out who he is is to find out more about Tuggle. Wait a minute, so... wait a minute. He doesn't know if this woman was his real mother. Doesn't he know who he is? No, he's got amnesia. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? The strangest thing is he believes that a large part of his life <clears throat> that he doesn't remember was spent in Pine Valley. Brooke? Billy Clyde killed Ted. I know, Brooke, and I'm sorry I shouldn't have even brought it up. No, it's all right. I, you know, I'm probably a better source than any file that we have in the Temple Morgue. What exactly does your friend Ted remember about Billy Clyde? Not a heck of a lot. I mean, stuff comes out in fragments, you know, like distorted images like dreams, only he's not asleep. Headaches, bad headaches. Well, since both he and Erica suffer from amnesia or dissociative neurosis, 
did some reading to make sure it wasn't in the Pine Valley water supply or anything. In any case, amnesia can be caused by emotional trauma, in Erica's case, or by physical trauma, like Ted, he had an injury to his head. Anyway, the important thing is that these kind of memories shouldn't be pushed, which is a good enough argument that we should just drop this whole subject and let nature take its course. Just staying involved. Exactly. Whatever these images are, they're, they're not good. How bad is not good? Threats and violence. At first, it wasn't too bad, but then his mother, Nola, was hospitalized. The stress increased. His headaches got worse. Well, you said that they, uh, he and his mother were very close, right? That they were best friends. Yeah, but this is the strange thing. They didn't really know or find each other until recently. It was, you see, he was abducted when he was little and taken who knows where for how long and he doesn't even remember anything about his life until he met Noah. And when was that? Two years ago, Christmas. What else has Ted remembered? Just a bunch of jumbled up stuff that doesn't make much sense. What kind of jumbled up stuff? Huggle, for instance, on it. You okay? You look kind of pale. <laughs> it's an amnesia case. It's fascinating. I just like, I'm just, uh, I just like to hear about it. What? What do you want to know about it? Just all of it. Just, you know, any, anything he would remember about Pine Valley. There's a girl, okay? He remembers a woman that he, um, that he loved, and I remember the research on Tuggle. He was a pimp, right? Well, I think that this girl might have been a hooker or an ex-hooker because he, he threatened her. Does Ted remember her name? No, no, just a, just a face. Uh, if he does, no, he didn't tell me. Just a face and um, he remembers her singing. Does he know what she looks like? I don't... What do you think, you know her? <laughs> I'm curious. Like the description fits a million women. I mean, she's she's blonde. She's got kind of strawberry blonde hair, blue eyes. She can sing. She's very pretty. Um, and she was in a major predicament. Anything else? <sighs> Anything else? Yeah. Um, they both enjoy chicken fingers. <laughs> and where is he now? In Pine Valley, uh, in, moving, out. He's leaving? Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's been hit pretty hard by this, you know? Uh, the memories have hit Ted since his mother died. He's got to go back to California, take care of the body for the funeral. Oh, right, I'm sorry. It's really late, you know? I'm going to go. Brooke, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. You're white as a sheet. You, you okay? I'm just tired. Let me drive you home. No, please. I'm fine. Mr. Orsini? Mr. Orsini? doing here? I could ask you the same thing. Mr. Orsini? Mr. Orsini? He must have checked out. Damn it. What did you want him for? I need to take him to meet Dixie. Dixie, why? To prove that she's not losing her mind or seeing things, that there is a logical explanation, but if the guy already took off to California... A logical explanation for what? Dixie's positive that she's lost Junior, and now she's scared to death that she's losing her mind, too. What does this have to do with Ted Orsini? She saw him, and, and, and the, from a distance, in, in the dark and fog. Brooke, she thought... What? What? And she thought she saw Tad. But Dixie saw this Ted Orsini tonight, but it was foggy, and she thought it was Tad. Have you met him? No. Has Dixie? 
No, no, but Junior met him in, in the park. He found him when, when, he, when Junior ran away from Terrence and on leave. I remember. Okay, well, later, Junior was looking at a bunch of old pictures, and he ran across one of Tad. And he said to Dixie that the man who found him looked a lot like Tad. So it stands to reason that whoever Dixie saw tonight on the bridge had to on be... On the bridge? Yeah. What bridge? Uh, Lockport. Dixie went there alone after a meeting with Judge Carson. She likes to go there sometimes. I don't know what it was. What did you say? You, he, he fell from a bridge? Lockport Bridge. No. The police say no one could survive that fall. So anyway, uh, since Tad saved them both from Adam before, he's been on Dixie's mind a lot lately. She wants him back alive, which... Well, I guess it's only natural. But, uh, anyway, so she saw Tad dark thought it was Tad, now she's freaking out, and the only person who can help her with this is, is this or seen. Oh, uh, we were looking for, we were looking for a Mr. Ted Orsini. Yeah, but oh. the room is empty, so. Miss Orsini checked out earlier this evening. Well, do you know where he went? At the airport. Great, great, great. Well, look, I'm gonna go back to Dixie. Will you let me know if you hear anything? Are you all right? I'm not sure. Hey, Phoebe. What are you doing here? It's after hours. Intervening. Of course, Brooke might call it um, meddling. She's not home yet. Is she not here, is she? No, no. She was here, but she left. Oh. And uh, don't worry about it. She hasn't fallen under my spell again. All right, we didn't even talk about us, okay? So you can cancel the red alert. She's safe from my evil influence at the moment. Well, thank heavens. I was afraid the poor girl was bound and determined to cast her pearls before swine yet again. But since that's not true, I bid you good night, Mr. Gray. Now, Phoebe, wait. I, I want to say something to you. There's nothing left to say, Edmund. Listen, I know how you feel about me, and I know... What I did to Brooke was wrong, and on that, as usual, we see eye to eye, same wavelength, no argument. But that's not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say was, I miss you. <laughs> I do. I do, and not because you're Brooke's aunt or anything. I don't want to get back into her good graces. I just miss you because of you. You're a hell of a woman. You're a, you're a patriot. You're a philanthropist. You're a pillar of society. Make your point. I just miss your friendship. Look, you went to bat for me a number of times, and I blew it with you. And I'm not asking for any miracles. I just, I just wish that maybe someday you and me could share another beer or something. Domestic or imported, wouldn't matter. I miss you too, Edmund. But I'm not sure if there'll ever come a time when we can share a brew, domestic or imported. Because frankly, I'm not sure that I can ever forgive you. To get it off my chest. Hmm. Of course, forgiveness is the key to Christian charity, but <laughs> I never pretended to be a saint. No, you never did. Mm -hmm. So I doubt if forgiveness can ever be in the picture, Edmund. But I do encourage you, keep on groveling. Ruth. Hi. Oh, Brooke, honey, hi. How about a cup of coffee? No, thanks. Uh, employee evaluation forms. Oh, I hate them. I put off doing this job as long as I possibly can. What can I do for you? Listen, I wanted to ask you about Ted Orsini. You too? Who else? Well, Brian was here earlier asking about him. Dixie's in terrible shape. He's very worried about it. Have you seen her or talked no, to I, her? No, I, uh, I just saw Brian. Well, I think what... Adam is doing to that girl and to her child is absolutely criminal. Adam should be shot. Oh. Listen, there's about this Ted Arsini. Do, mm. do you know him? Well, his mother was a cardiac patient here. She's a lovely woman. Joe and I are, we're very fond of her. And her son? Well, he spent hours at her bedside. Nola was devoted to Ted and he to her. Oh, well, okay. What is that? Nothing, nothing. So... So you and Joe, you met her son. 
Ted, right? No. We, we never actually met. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's me. That's me. It means you need me. I'm gonna have to run. Listen, um, I don't know how long I'll be, but if you have any more questions, stick around, okay? What time is that? And the connection? So in other words, I, I take a direct flight to San Francisco, and I change planes there for service to Napa, and I can be there by tomorrow morning. Oh, hi. Thank you for coming. Really? You sounded so urgent on the phone. I mean, uh, Jamie isn't ill, is he? I have to go out of town tonight. An assignment? Can you stay with Jamie? It isn't Edmund. Oh, no, he got to you, didn't he? In spite of everything, you've forgiven him, taken him back, and now you want to sneak away on a lover's tryst. No, it's not that. Oh, my goodness, to think that I trusted that cad, that, that unprincipled rascal. Brooke, this is all wrong. I absolutely Darling, forbid it. Darling, Phoebe, surely Brooke knows what she's doing. He even tried to butter me up this evening. Brooke, you mustn't forgive him, dear. For heaven's sakes, remember what he's done. I haven't forgotten. Why, if you... I mean, taking him back so precipitously like this, it's madness. Please stop. Reconsider, please. Please, if you won't do it for your own sake, then do it for your child's sake. It's Jamie that I'm thinking about. What? It doesn't have anything to do with Edmund. Do you hear that, Phoebe? You see? This trip has to do with Jamie's father. What? Was that Tad? But my dear, Dad's dead. Maybe not. What were you just saying? Ted may still be alive. Who is Ted Orsini? The Orsinis were house guests. They were staying at Wildwind. Mrs. Orsini died yesterday. Now, I never met her, and I never met her son. But why would he want information on that fiend, Billy Clark? Ted Orsini has amnesia. And the only thing he remembers is that his life basically started two years ago in mid-December when he hitched hiked out to California. Two years, December, when Tad went over the bridge. And we thought that he died. And the body was never recovered. Oh, but how, how, you're just grasping at straws. I thought I was doing that too. I talked to Edmund, he says that this, this Ted, he, he's beginning to get some of his memory back. He feels that whatever life he lost was here that it was here, that it was in Pine Valley. Oh, but that doesn't mean that... He it's... also remembers a woman that he loved. He remembers that this woman be, was being threatened by a man named Billy Clyde Tuggle. Dixie! Exactly. I thought this was crazy. I thought this was insane. This is impossible. And then I talked to Brian. Well, how did Brian get involved? Brian told me that Dixie saw this man, this Ted Orsini, on the Lockport Bridge. So? She believes the man that she saw was Ted. Look, whoever Dixie saw on that bridge, she thought it was Ted, and she thinks she's going crazy. She's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Oh, the poor child. Oh, it must be ghastly for if her. she saw somebody, if she really saw somebody, and it was Tad, and if I can bring him back to her... It would be a miracle. I mean, Tad was the one who saved her before from Adam. Tad is the man that loved her. So do you see why I have to go? Of course. But if it is, Tad, you be all right? I don't know. And I'm trying it... not to think about that until I can get to the bottom of everything. And if it is, Tad, he has no idea that he has fathered a son. So that's another reason to go. I mean, even if Dixie didn't need Tad desperately right now, I owe it to Jamie to find out if his father is alive. <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Good luck to you. Safe trip, my dear. You know, Ted Martin is alive. I'm going to find him. Totally honest with each other since the word go. Don't start playing games with me now. I'm not. Prove it. 
How? Simple yes or no answer will do. Are you in love with me? Yes. 